Hello guys, I'm Yespas here, uh, coming back to you with another playthrough of DuckTales Remastered. And this time, I'm playing this on the Wii U, by the way. And this time, we're going to be playing, uh, stage, uh, we're going to be playing the level Amazon. I cannot say my words properly today. We're going to be playing the Amazon stage today. So, let's start the Amazon, and, uh, let's watch these little cutscenes. Get launch pad on the horn. I'm headed to the Amazon jungle to find the scepter of the Incan King. I really like the HD in this game. It looks really nice. Thanks for the lift, Launchpad. No problemo. Lift is one of my favorite principles of aerodynamics. No, oh, say, you got your radio, Mr. McDee? Hi, of course I do. Great, then I'll be your eyes in the sky. Oh, I'd be happy if you just keep your eyes on the sky for once. What an airhead. Ah, hey, I heard that. Now then, ancient Incan legends claim the King's Scepter was locked away in a giant temple of the clothes. And it should be dead ahead. Gee, Mr. McGee, I see a lot of clouds, but no temple. It wouldn't launch, but the legend says the temple was hidden away from all but King Manco Capquac himself. But there's bound to be a way to reveal it buried somewhere in this overgrown salad bowl, and I'm not leaving till I find it. Ooh, stubborn duck there. Alright, I actually think this is one some of the best music in this game is actually from this stage. Although most people think it's the moon theme. Which I can agree with actually, because the moon theme is awesome. And is my favorite, but I think this comes at a close, very close second. Because just the jump up especially in the remastered version, the duck I, I don't I don't think I particularly cared for it on the NES, to be honest. I don't think I did, because it kind of sounded a little bit, probably too pitchy for me, because uh, it is 8-bit, and uh, now that it's in, uh, on the Wii U, the sound palette is a lot, you know, it's very vast, and it's a lot better to make a, uh, I think that's mixing up on my words, I can't talk today, <laughs> I can't, uh, the music sounds a lot better, uh, when it's remastered and everything, the composer did a really good job is uh, what I'm really trying to say. Composer of all this. And especially the guy who redid all these songs. The remastered. And also, one more thing while we're mentioning sound. Is that the voice actor who plays Scrooge McDuck, aka Alan Young, is probably one of my favorite voice actors. You guys probably don't really care. But he's one of my favorite uh, voice actors of all time. Even though it's not the only thing he ever does. He is also an actor, a regular actor. I've actually seen some of his earlier stuff, uh, his earlier work. Um, I forget the name of that one show, but I remember that show. It's really good. Uh, I, I forget the name. <laughs> I can't believe I did that, but it's, it's about a horse, a talking horse. And uh, I guess Mr. Young is his trainer or something like that. I don't know. It's been a long time, but it's really, he's a really funny person. And, uh, it's, it, it is a true honor that he, you know, came back and did the voice scene for this, uh, new game. The guy who played Scrooge McDuck himself. He, uh, got himself back into the voice acting. Came back one more time to do Scrooge, and I think the whole cast did an excellent job, you know, replaying all their roles. Uh, some of them do sound a little bit older, but... These people are like 80, 90. Uh, like he's Alan Young. He's like, he's in his late, er, uh, mid to late 90s. Almost 100 years old. And he still sounds exactly like he did in the cartoon. Uh, the only person I can really notice that sounds just a little bit different. Uh, no, this is just me. Uh, um, I'm only considering the ones that actually did the original, uh, show, because I know Mrs. Beakley, uh, the voice actor that did her voice had passed on a few years ago, 
Um, so she obviously sounds a little bit different. It's a new actress. But they got the, all the cast that was still alive to do this. But Magicka Dispel sounds a little bit older than uh, in the cartoon, but that's fine. The last time she did that voice was like in what, 1990s? Some, somewhere in the 1990s? So I respect her trying to portray Miss Magicka Dispel. And uh, she actually did a really good job. She just got, sounds a little bit older. That, there's no problem with that. I think the whole cast does an excellent job for what they have to do. I just think it's really good. But they got the whole cast back to do this. They didn't just take some amateur actors, you know, and get them to do the voices of some of the most iconic characters uh, in Disney cartoons. So I'm very happy they went with that approach. Back to this game though, it's very vibrant, and that's what I like about it. Uh, the HD backgrounds stand out very well. And by very well, I mean like, it's like you're actually playing an episode of the cartoon. Look at this! An ancient coin with the image of a scythe. It must represent a good harvest. <sighs> what is it, Launchpad? Well, where are the extra fuel canisters? <laughs> That's why I'm calling you, boss. I checked the glove compartment, but my found was gloves. Oh, you'd best find those fuel canisters, or well, the next thing you'll be flying is a model airplane. Okay, okay. This time I ask you for help. Is that a promise? Alright, so back to the game. I'm going to be quiet during the cutscenes, because... I don't want to ruin the genius that all these people went through uh, to go through all this. I really appreciate it, what they've done to you know, revamp everything, and I think the attempt is very good, and uh, the product is also fairly well. Uh, actually, I really like the game. If I already mentioned that, I'm not even going to say fairly well, because it's a masterpiece in my mind. It's like a good work of art exactly what I can compare it to. This is a work of art. When someone goes and designs a game like this. Look at all the detail and all the artwork and all the sprites. The hand-drawn sprites. It all look so crisp and clean and vibrant. It doesn't look, you know, all mushed up like some of the other games these days. There's a few games that have, uh, not the best graphics, but graphics don't make a game, uh, so I'm not going to give it a pass on that. But I'm not here to critique it because I really can't find anything wrong with it. Except some of the jumps are kind of hard to get through, like this one right here, uh, without hitting your head on the top. But maybe that's just because I haven't mastered it yet. So yeah, there is a small learning curve, but once you learn it, it's really, really fun. Found another one, and it depicts the really might of a spear. Launchbot, what was that? Okay, that was slightly awkward, um, but I always thought Launchpad was actually one of the best characters. Besides, you know, Scrooge with Duck and maybe Magic though, the spell. I really like her too. Uh, but I think Launchpad, any game that has Launchpad in it, it's, it's a game that I'm going to be playing a lot. So I probably just missed the treasure chest. Because that rock probably wasn't there for nothing. Let me see. No? I didn't miss any kind of chest? Okay. That's slightly... Uh, I don't even know the word for it. I'm not even going to try. Um, but I do enjoy this game very much. It's actually one of my favorites. I already said this a lot. I can't believe I keep repeating stuff. But this is one of my favorite games. Um, let's talk about different stuff other than things I've already mentioned previous episodes. By the way, if you haven't seen part one, I will put the link right here, right now. Uh, it's right where Scrooge McDuck is right now. Click on the Scrooge. 
or around him. Uh, I can give you the link to the first part. Uh, I'll also link it in the description below. And uh, basically that's it. Because I'm going to be doing this in many parts, as I mentioned in the first episode, in case you haven't uh, watched it yet. Um, I'm going to be doing this in multiple parts. Uh, just, just, you know, uh, I want to make sure that, one, first of all, I want to make sure I have enough memory to do it all. If I don't have enough memory to do it all, then it'll be kind of hard. I'm going to record probably one more episode, uh, one more part today, and then I'm going to record the rest tomorrow. Launchpad, were you dropped on your head much as a child? All the time. I really enjoy these cutscenes. Look at the background. Those are one of my favorite things, the detail in the backgrounds. I just think it's it's very exceptional. And it's probably one of my favorite uh, backgrounds in, in a video game. Although some of these en enemies I could do without, but... <laughs> Let's go to the end of the stage where we have to go and, you know, let's go to the end of the stage and put all the coins into a, uh, something. <laughs> but put the coins, all eight coins, I believe it was eight, all eight coins into a... Let's put all eight coins into, like, some sort of metal thing. It's the best way I can really describe it. Oh, I love that. This is one of my favorite animations. Whenever he gets bit by one of those. We have to put it into this thing right here. Come in, Launchpad. I found something. There's a carving of Mongo Kukwak on this stone slab, and there's eight succulent notches around it. Sounds great. Does it tell us how to find the treasure? Well, I'm not sure what it tells us, but I'm certain it's an important clue. Bless me, bagpipes. These coins I found will fit perfectly into those notches. Oh, you must have come across an ancient Incan poker table, Mr. McDee. How about I come down there? You deal me in for a hand. You come down here and I'll deal you a blow to the heat. You're supposed to be keeping an eye out for trouble, remember? <laughs> All right. Trouble spot it is. Launchpad. What if the images on these coins symbolize the various tribes of Mungo Kapkwak's empire? Maybe if I surround him with them. Oh no, it's not working. Hey, maybe you need to say the magic words. Or maybe not. You look at that! The ancient city of Mungo Kapkwak! And that beam of light! It must be pointing to the Temple of the Clouds! But how am I going to get across? Up here, Mr. McDee! Okay, so we're going to go... Uh, this is actually kind of like a bonus level. That I just died on. Um, since we're on easy, that's kind of why I picked easy. Because I die a lot in these type of games. Where it involves me jumping a lot, especially on narrow platforms. But I like this uh, aspect. If you want it, you can just stay up here and nothing will hurt you. But I kind of want to get money. I'm screwed with death, what else should I do? So, I'm going to bounce around everywhere and get hit by stuff and hopefully land on these platforms sometimes. <laughs> or die. So, this is a very tedious task for me. I don't exactly know if I want to go on all of these. I don't think I want to. I think it'll be too hard. Way too hard, actually. Alright, so I guess that's the only way to get up there. Alright, nothing up here. Alright. Stay up here, launch pad, me over here. Oh, come on. Nope, over here. 
over here. Alright, that's good. I'm bouncing on my can a lot. I love doing that in the first game. Um, unfortunately, since they're playing on easy, I believe that's the only reason I can't unlock the hard pogo, which is the way you did it in the original NES game, I believe. Because I have not ooh, played that in a while. Alright, so sorry for the boring commentary, it's just really late at night. Uh, so I have to kind of be a little bit quieter. But, you know, it's okay, I guess. I can still express how much I love that animation. But everything I seem to be saying kind of gets old really fast. So, I'm not going to talk too often. Who am I kidding? I'm going to talk the whole time. Or what else, what would a let's play really be? Just a video, really. It would kind of be just like a walkthrough. So. But I'm not doing a walkthrough, I'm doing a let's play. If there's a difference. With a little help from your old pal, Launchpad McQuack. Oh, of course, Launchpad. I couldn't have done it without you. Now just hold on, and with a little luck, that scepter will be mine in no time. Alright, so I'm, I'm just going to sum up what the cutscene just said, in case you weren't listening. Actually, I think I might be able to get some gems over here. I always forget about that. I always go bouncing around over here. In, like, the corners and nooks and crannies of stuff. Because you can actually find some gems. Uh, I think the red gems are my favorite. Of all the gems. And there's a reason. Uh, I think they're the most valuable. I believe. Don't, like... Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure the red gems are the most valuable. Alright, and you can always find like little hidden secrets. Like this, where there's a whole big room. And like I said, bounce in some of the crevices. You sometimes have stuff. You try this crevice, nothing over there. Alright, so we're gonna bounce and get all this treasure. And the cake replenishes our entire health. But I'm pretty sure you don't get cake in the hard mode, uh, or or even uh, regular. I'm pretty sure you get just an extra life. Don't quote me on that, like I said. I don't know anything. I really like this part. It feels like Indiana Jones for some reason. Oh, then again, that's what DuckTales did a lot. They would take, they would kind of make name spoofs of things. Like, they do Raiders of the Lost. I don't even know what the name of the episode is, but it's some, it's some sort of duck pun. They always did puns with their name. I don't know why. But they did. I'm not going to question it, but they did that a lot with the episodes. So I'm thinking they might actually have carried those puns into the game, which I think is amazing. Amazing, amazing, whatever. I say both, because one sounds fancier and snootier, and I like to be fancy and snooty. Oh, and look, here's Mrs. Beakley, who is not done by the original voice actor, I do not believe, because she, what I read, but then again, Wikipedia is not the best source, I heard that she has passed away, the voice actor, um, so rest in peace, and she, uh, this voice actor will never become even close, uh, you know, Mr. McDonald, these giant stone obelisks would make wonderful souvenirs for the boys. Yeah, I don't believe that. <sighs> I believe she's passed away, which I find very sad. Because she was also another favorite of mine. Also iconic, though. That's the one thing about DuckTales. Whenever you say DuckTales, it's hard to not name all the cast. It's, it's hard to not remember them all, because they all have such diverse personalities, in my opinion. They have such diverse personalities, and everything they do is so different from what the other cast members do. I believe there's actually a treasure chest here for some reason. Whenever I see just a random boulder, I always think there's a treasure chest. Because you go up to the boulder and you hit it. And again, there's always little jewels hanging around everywhere. I always hated these enemies. These are probably my least favorite enemies out of the entire game. Let's like jump over there, like regular jump. 
Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, definitely do that. You're gonna get a whole bunch of money. And I always check, like, in these little tiny crevices. Uh, especially for different reasons. But, you know, see, like, here's a boulder. You don't break it. You hit the Y or A button, I believe. Yeah, the Y or A button, and you can knock them down. And these blocks are about to fall, so you have to just keep walking. Don't go back for anything. I'm actually gonna... <gasps> ah, that was the stupidest thing ever. Oh, I'm not gonna get the treasure patch, uh, the treasure chest back, am I? I don't believe I am. No, I'm not. Oh no. That probably had something really good in it, too. Well, at least you got a cake. That's probably one of the best things you could really get in the is a uh, life the punisher thing in the gym. Sort of. The one thing I did not show you, uh, in the previous section is that in each stage, you can get a certain amount. Oh no! My memory card's almost done. So I think I'm gonna have to do this really either really quick or do the boss battle in a different episode. So this may end abruptly. Warning. Because my memory card cannot hold like can hold like three more minutes. Literally. So I have to go like as fast as possible. AFAP. That should be another word. Instead of ASAP. Uh, as fast as possible. So, let's go up. Now let's just check our maps to see what we have to do. Oh, okay, we're in the boss room, almost. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm going to cut, and I am going to play the boss afterwards. Uh, it's gonna be another whole episode, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in a different level. I'm gonna, like, put in another level. I'm just gonna do the boss in another level. Or maybe I'll just do a really, really short episode, just the boss. So thank you for watching, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, uh, please keep in mind if you want to message me, you're going to have to message me on my Facebook page, uh, entitled NES Pest, I'll put a link in the description below, and uh, just because the YouTube Google Plus thing doesn't work for me. Um, so thank you for watching, uh, stay tuned for part 3, where you'll see me battle whatever's in this door, ooh, I wonder what it is, I already know what it is, but <laughs> alright, thank you for watching, and peace out.